All right, hey guys, Jason here. What we're gonna talk about today is if you are like me, what midsize truck would you buy today? What would be your go-to midsize or what would mine be if I were buying today? And that is, uh, that's what we're gonna answer. We're gonna also do this on full size and we're gonna do it on HD trucks. We're gonna cover those, but my number one pick is sitting right here, sort of, sort of, kind of a combination here. All right, so uh, remember, for me, things there are certain things that matter because my truck is a tool. My truck is a tool that gets beat on levels that are unheard of. I need quality, I need robustness, I need durability, I need strength, and I need capability for what I do. You can look over here and see somewhere over there, I'll show you, but I got my, my Gladiator sitting there, but it would be a Gladiator Rubicon model. However, it would not be an X model. I do not want the X. No offense to these, but for what I do, the biggest factor on the X is I do not want these. I do not want these color matched fenders on here. Yes, they got PPE on them, which is a very nice thing, but mine get beat up way too bad. And I brush a lot of brush with these, and these even up here, they would get scraped. If I owned one of these, I would PPF this whole entire thing. This whole fender would be PPF down there so that it's or paint protection films would be PPF is like you see on here I would do the whole thing so I would much rather personally have this set up right here I have these on mine I love them and what's nice about them is they are uh, cheap to replace I can buy these as knockoffs on Facebook marketplace for like 80 bucks for both of them um, so they're not expensive or even new they're not expensive mine are so dinged up with rock chips and dings and stuff they're covered in mud I'll show them to you when I go over to my truck but for me these are a wearable replaceable item on the front and on the back when I go to get rid of my gladiator I will probably, the fronts aren't too bad. They don't get beat too bad. The back ones get crushed. So I will replace these um, and have them back to perfect before I go ahead and get rid of them. That is just something that's gonna be done on here on mine 100%. So uh, it's a nice factor to have them. I like the simplicity of those. I also like that I can get cloth seats. I have cloth in mine. When you go up to here, you are getting into leather in the X model. I would rather not have the leather. So for me, a non-X Rubicon model is what I'm after for myself personally in a Rubicon. It matches what I would get. Yes, I would get the, sta the factory steel bumper on my next one. I do not have it on mine. Mine has got the standard bumper like this on there. And while I don't mind it, I like the idea of being able to put a winch on the steel one in the front anyway. So I would prefer to have that option if I could get it. Other than that, there's not much I need to it. Standard, just a lower grade Rubicon would fit my bill 100% perfectly. And I would expect to get it for about $45,000. Um, I do not need to have anything go crazy or get out of whack in it. I do not need uh, the bed liner. I put a bed mat in mine, so this would be just fine. So the bed mat is way more important than the bed liner. Bed liner just shreds gear. So all it does to me as a hunter, hiker, and outdoorsman, all this does is shred and ruin my gear like sandpaper does. So for me, this is irrelevant. A bed mat, rubber bed mat back here, means more to me than anything else does. And I like having in the Rubicon and the Mojave, both have them, but I like having the rear tow hooks on both the rear recovery points and the rear or the double front recovery points on there too. So that Gladiator would win for me and I'd be looking about $45,000. I also am not a fan of the color matched roof for the same reason, okay? Mine gets rushed with sticks and crap everywhere. It gets, this thing gets abused and it does not show anywhere on it. It holds up incredibly. Um, these on mine are completely waxed and protected as best as I possibly can to make sure they don't get any scratches on them, but this here holds up just phenomenal. So I love this simple setup on here and I do not want the color matched, any of that kind of stuff. So the simpler version of a Rubicon is what I would go with. The only modifications I would make to this Rubicon would be I would go to 35 inch tires, 35 1150s, not 35 1250s because of the gearing. We only got 410 gears in this thing, okay? So as it, it comes stock. Now you can get some of the packages on the, uh, on the, uh, um, on the uh, Wrangler. See if they got one here. You can get them with, yeah, here's one right here. We can get the 35 1250 package on the Extreme Recon or Extreme XR package like this where you're getting a 35 1250 and you get the extra extension flares. You get the back, bigger back uh, rack carrier for the size. But honestly speaking, you get the bigger gears in here too. What do they give you gear wise in this? 
What do they do with that package? Uh, it's got to say on here somewhere. And hang on. Right there, it says 456 gears. You get 456 gears on this package. Okay, that's a beautiful thing. You don't get that luxury in a, in a Rubicon. You're still getting the 410 or 411. I think it's 410 gears in here. So going to a 35... 1250 tire or a 35 or a 37 1250 is just too big without re-gearing this thing um, for what I do. Now, if you're just running around dirt roads and things like that, and, uh, running some trails, you'll be fine on that. But for me, in the mud, in the, in the deep mud with a 35 1150 it's it's perfect for that gear ratio if i go bigger than that then what happens is i have to be in four low a lot more often where i can be in four high here with the off-road button off-road plus button engaged and i can do just fine and get around perfectly um even in big mud holes but uh you go putting too big of tires on there and you get too much weight on there what'll happen is you'll drop into a mud hole and you'll just go so it sounds like and your rpm gauge won't go above uh, you know 1500 rpms and your vehicle doesn't move why because you cannot turn the wheels over the engine and the trance don't have the power in four high to do it you just sit there and go and floor it and it just goes and holds it 1500 rpm it cannot get you the power to get out unless you go into four low so there's a ratio in there that's going to matter and for these gearings we got i think a 35 11 50 which fits stock on your standard rims is the best tire setup so i would put a bed mac in the back i would put a 35 11 50 on it if i don't get it with led packages then in the headlights i would put led light bulbs in it like i did on mine off amazon for like 35 bucks and uh sweet simple and i'd want the steel bumper <clears throat> and then i put a car hard uh, seat cover on the front just like i did mine i would set this truck up exactly like i did mine already the truck i have is pure perfection and uh but again when i buy another truck at the a year from now when i'm done okay I, right now i got almost forty thousand miles on mine when i got eighty thousand miles on it or a little less somewhere around there it's gone i'm getting something new that time right now my best option would be to buy another one of these and that is exactly what my intent is if the deal is solid Okay, right now you're looking at 65 or 66 and 68 thousand dollars on these on this one here being a non-x model 66 thousand this one being an x model you're at 60 ooh, there's a lot of fire ants right there here you're at 60 68 6 almost 69 thousand i would expect to pay 45 thousand for the one i would get because i don't need the x package and all this stuff on there so um i'm figuring what, what i would expect to pay for it would be 45 thousand dollars so it fits my budget it fits my needs i get the front and rear lockers i get all the capability i get the robustness the beefiness the quality i get everything i want everything and I love the driving style of the Gladiator and the Wranglers, okay? A lot of people knock it, oh, it wanders a little bit. Oh, I don't like those way it's see. I don't like how loud. I don't care what anybody else likes. For me, it's an interactive driving experience that I absolutely love, okay? I love it. I just did 6,600 6, miles over three weeks in this truck, um, you know, in mine as I uh, did this uh, that 25-day hunting trip. I loved it. I wouldn't rather spend that in any other vehicle, including my 4Runner, but it's like, oh, you should take the 4Runner, so much more comfortable. Pfft. No, sorry, I apologize, but I would much rather be in this. Plus, this vehicle let me get to places on those out-of-state trips during a rut hunting trip where there's a lot of people there, okay? A lot of people are traveling the Midwest to hunt deer during that time. And uh, they're out there with their F-150s and their Rams and their Silverados and their, some of them in their HD trucks and their F-250s, and they can't go nowhere. They go down the road and they get a parking lot or they can go so far down a little, these little roads and get there and that's all they get, okay? They can't even pull off some places or turn around in some of them. My Gladiator, I can get places they can't even dream of. And I can go there with ease, even pulling in. You know, like I can pull over and stop on some of the sides of the roads. They're like this, where they're a steep drop off right here. And you could park there to hunt, but those trucks can't go in here. They can't pull off right here and then expect to get back out. They can't do it. My Gladiator can do that all day long. Nothing to it. Pull right down in here, park right down in here, sit there all day, even if it sinks in the wet ground a little bit. I come back from hunting, get in it, and pop the lockers, and boom, she pulls right out. People can't do that in a lot of vehicles. So for me, and what I do, this is my number one for a midsize. What would be my number two? My number two would be a Colorado ZR2. That would be my number two choice. 
Also, if I'd get it for $45,000 right now for a 2024. We're talking about if I was buying right now. I could get a ZR2 2024 Colorado ZR2, and I could get it for $45,000. I get the front locker. I get the rear locker, which are both amazing. Is it as robust and durable as a Gladiator is? No. Is it amazing? Yes, it is. It's actually my favorite truck. I do, like I said, do I think my Gladiator edges it out in capability, robustness, and things of, or, or, of, uh, of priority of use for me? I think the Gladiator wins, but if I cannot get the deal on a Gladiator that's going to make me happy and make it worthwhile, ZR2 is my fallback, and I'd be 100% okay with that ZR2. I would have to be a little more careful with it, and I'm okay with that, okay? But I do believe that this thing right here is as much of a tank as a truck can be in a mid-sized world, okay? That's what I love about it. This thing is, it is, it gets you there, it gets you back, it takes you to places that nothing else can, and it does it reliably, proven, and it's gonna get you home, and you're not gonna break anything. That is where these things shine. And that's what's most important to me for what I do. <clears throat> so for me, number one, mid-sized truck, Gladiator, hands down. Number two, ZR2 would be right there also. Now when it comes to maintenance on these things too, God, look at this one. I showed this in another video. Look at this amazing hardtop two-door Willis. I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. I love the big back window. I mean, it's, it's a fun factor vehicle. I wouldn't buy this as an only daily driver with only two doors. I need more space and access to the back seat since it's too much of a pain in the butt. I've owned a couple of these, but that one is just so gorgeous. Um, but the beauty of the Gladiator, like these Wranglers, simplicity, man, that 3.6 liter motor in that thing the ease of maintenance, the availability of parts, the robustness of everything. There is a reason that that Gladiator is one of the true trucks that can go indefinitely because it can constantly be repaired and redone. <coughs> you can do most of these repairs yourself in your own driveway. There's a YouTube video on pretty much anything you could ever do to a Jeep to show you how to do it yourself. Everything about it is simple, affordable, parts are affordable, and it is flawless in every way. For me, my number one mid-sized truck, Gladiator. Hands down is the Jeep Gladiator. If I cannot make that deal happen, ZR2 is gonna come in there. But I mean, my truck lives in the woods 24 seven. Look at it, here it is right there. That's mine. That's what it looks like all the time. We got 35, 11, 50 Toyos. I don't recommend the Toyo open countries. I'm not getting them again. They've been doing all right, but I much prefer Falcons. <clears throat> but this thing is a tool, 100% a tool that works every day for a living. 35, 11, 50s, I will never not have ditch lights. These are no sights. I've done videos on them. These are absolutely amazing for making sure I don't hit deer, hogs and things like that while I'm going down the back road. Straight up incredible. This thing has been flawless. I put LED headlights in here. It looks quite funny when you compare them to this i'll actually show you here if i turn these on there they go they come on look at the difference between oh they're not kicking on the, the side ones but we got led headlights here and then these are halogen when you turn those on it is quite funny to actually look at let me start it here and show you <coughs> look at this look at how funny that looks comparing the leds to the halogens Okay, but those are Amazon uh, uh, Amazon LED bulbs. They're incredible. These, these are, I could change these out, but I just don't care. Those are the ones that do the work for me. And when I kick those beasts on, unbelievable. So, um, but just a fantastic, like I said, working vehicle. This is a working man's tool is what this truck is. And I love it. Put a simple tonneau cover on here that is functional and it works every way I need it. A bed mat in here, right here, super thick bed mat. I will also, if I get another one, I will put this, I will transfer this right over to it. I love my cutting board tailgate cover. It's made by uh, Hook uh, Hooker or Hook Road. Um, there's plenty of these on Amazon. They're like a hundred bucks, but that makes it just amazing back here. You can see I beat the crap out of this thing. This truck is a tool on every single level. It is 100% pure tool in form, function, and what I do with it, and I would have it no other way. And uh, when it comes time for me to buy my next truck, if I can make a deal happen on one of these, this is it. People will be like, well, why not just keep that one? Because I'm going to be at a precipice, a pivotal point next year where I'll have 75,000 miles on this, 
it'll only be two years old. And I'm with the amount of money I got off on it, the 11 grand off on it, if I play my cards right, I could walk away from this and not lose too much. Maybe even if I get away with only losing, because normally I would have expected to make money on it. But the way things have been going with the pricing, even if I lose, say, let's say even worst case scenario, worst case, I lose 10 grand on this, okay, over what I paid for it, and I lose $10,000 on it, 10, even $12,000, that's not that bad if I can then turn around and get a deal on another one too as well. So I'm okay with that, but I'm not going to own a vehicle that is outside of warranty. I'm personally not going to do it and I'm not going to risk it again with my lifestyle of being in remote places very far and no cell service. I need reliability and quality and I'm not going out there with a 200,000 mile truck. And I'm also not planning on a trip that's going to take me away from every place that I know and be as important to me as I do like my monthly or my yearly 25 day hunting trip i'm not doing it with a truck with 200,000 miles on it i'm just not doing it i need the reliability so i'll spend the money so in next year this one gets replaced if it can be replaced with a gladiator it will 100 percent if it can't be replaced with a gladiator then it will be replaced with a zr2 so just a little heads up for you on what i think and why on a midsize thanks for watching comments put them down below